The Haunting in Connecticut is a horror movie that claims to be based on a true story, but how much of it is really true and how much is fiction? The movie tells the story of the Campbell family, who move into a house that used to be a funeral home and experience terrifying paranormal activity. The movie is inspired by the real-life experiences of the Snedeker family, who lived in a similar house in Southington, Connecticut in the late 1980s. But the Snedeker family story is not as simple as it seems. It is a story of mystery, controversy, and deception. It is a story that involves a sick child, a haunted house, and a pair of famous ghost hunters. It is a story that has been questioned, challenged, and disputed by many. This is the story behind the haunting in Connecticut. The Snedeker family consisted of Carmen and Alan and their four children, Philip, Bradley, Alan Jr., and Jennifer. They also had a niece, Tammy, who lived with them. In 1986, the family moved from New York to Connecticut to be closer to the hospital where Philip was receiving treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of cancer. They rented a house on Meriden Avenue, which seemed spacious and affordable, but they soon discovered that the house had a dark past. It had been a funeral home for decades and the basement still contained embalming equipment, coffins, and mortuary records. The family also found strange items such as crucifixes, religious statues, and books on necromancy, the practice of communicating with the dead. The family claimed that they started to experience paranormal phenomena soon after they moved in. They heard voices, footsteps, and banging noises. They felt cold spots, foul smells, and electric shocks. They saw apparitions, shadows, and orbs. They had nightmares, visions, and hallucinations. They felt touched, grabbed, and scratched by unseen forces. They also noticed changes in their personalities, moods, and behaviors. They became angry, depressed, and violent. They argued, fought, and abused each other. They felt oppressed, tormented, and terrified by the spirits in the house. Philip, the eldest son, was the most affected by the haunting. He claimed that he was possessed by a demonic entity who made him do evil things. He said that he saw corpses, blood, and fire in his room. He said that he heard voices telling him to kill his family and himself. He said that he felt a constant pain in his head, as if someone was drilling into his skull. He also said that he was sexually assaulted by the entity, who appeared to him as a man with long black hair and black eyes. Philip's condition worsened, and he was eventually admitted to a psychiatric hospital, where he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. The family sought help from various sources, including priests, psychics, and paranormal investigators. They contacted Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famous couple who had investigated cases such as the Amityville Horror and the Annabelle Doll. The Warrens agreed to take on the case and brought along a team of researchers, reporters, and cameramen. They conducted several investigations in the house and claimed to have witnessed and recorded evidence of the haunting. They also performed a cleansing ritual and an exorcism and declared the house free of evil. The family said that the paranormal activity stopped after the Warrens' intervention and that they felt peace and relief. The Warrens also helped the family to publicize their story and to profit from it. They arranged for a book to be written about the case titled In a Dark Place, The Story of a True Haunting by Ray Garton. They also appeared on several TV shows and documentaries, such as A Haunting and Discovery Channel's A Haunting in Connecticut, which aired in 2002. The family received money and fame from their story and claimed that they were telling the truth. They said that they had survived a horrific ordeal and that they wanted to share their story with the world. But not everyone believed the Snedeker family's story. Many people questioned, challenged, and disputed their claims. They pointed out the inconsistencies, contradictions, and exaggerations in their accounts. They accused them of lying, fabricating, and embellishing their story. They suggested that they had ulterior motives, such as money, attention, and sympathy. They also presented alternative explanations, such as mental illness, drug abuse, and imagination. They said that the Snedeker family's story was not a true story, but a hoax. One of the most vocal critics of the Snedeker family story was Ray Garten, the author of the book, In a Dark Place. 
Garten later admitted that he had doubts about the veracity of the story and that he had been instructed by the Warrens to make up some of the details. He said that he had interviewed the family members separately and that they had given him different and conflicting versions of the events. He said that he had confronted the Warrens about the discrepancies and that they had told him to use what works and make it up and make it scary. He said that he had regretted writing the book and that he had considered it a low point in his career. Another critic of the Snedeker family story was Joe Nickel, a paranormal investigator and skeptic. Nickel visited the house in 1992 and found no evidence of the haunting. He said that the house had no history of being a funeral home and that the basement had been used as a storage area by the previous owners. He said that the items that the family had found in the basement, such as the embalming equipment and the books on necromancy, had been planted there by someone, possibly the Warrens. He said that the family had suffered from psychological problems, such as Philip's schizophrenia, and that they had been influenced by the Warrens and the media. He said that the Snedeker family story was a hoax and a fraud. The Snedeker family story also faced criticism from the local community, especially the neighbors and the former owners of the house. They said that they had never experienced or witnessed anything paranormal in the house and that they had never heard of it being a funeral home. They said that the family had made up the story to get attention and money and that they had tarnished the reputation of the house and the neighborhood. They said that the Snedeker family story was a joke and a lie. The Snedeker family story, however, remained popular and influential despite the criticism and controversy. It inspired a Hollywood horror movie, The Haunting in Connecticut, which was released in 2009. The movie was a box office success, grossing over $77 million worldwide. The movie was also a critical success, receiving positive reviews from critics and audiences. The movie was praised for its atmosphere, suspense, and scares. The movie was also marketed as based on a true story although it took many creative liberties with the original story. The movie spawned a sequel, The Haunting in Connecticut, Two Ghosts of Georgia, which was released in 2013. The sequel was based on another alleged true story of a haunted house, but had no connection to the Snedeker family story. The Snedeker family story, however, remains unresolved and controversial. The family members have maintained their claims and have defended their story against the critics. They have said that they have nothing to gain from lying and that they have suffered from the backlash and the stigma of their story. They have said that they have told the truth and that they have witnessed the supernatural. They have also said that they have moved on from their past and that they have found peace and happiness. The critics, on the other hand, have continued to question and challenge the family's claims and have presented their arguments and evidence against the story. They have said that the family has everything to gain from lying and that they have benefited from the publicity and the money of their story. They have said that the family has not told the truth and that they have fabricated the supernatural. They have also said that the family has not moved on from their past and that they have exploited their story for fame and fortune. The truth, however, remains uncertain and elusive. The Snedeker family story is a story of mystery controversy and deception. It is a story that involves a sick child, a haunted house and a pair of famous ghost hunters. It is a story that has been questioned, challenged and disputed by many. It is a story that has inspired a terrifying Hollywood horror film. It is a story that has haunted Connecticut and the world for over three decades. It is a story that will never be forgotten and will always be remembered.